In our last episode, we found some pretty amazing anchorages and had them all to ourselves. This time around, we spend a little time in Puerto Don Juan, then push a little farther north into some of Mexico's greatest cruising grounds, the Bay of LA. Puerto Don Juan is not only considered to be the best hurricane hole in the northern Sea of Cortez, it's also a pretty nice place to spend a bit of time. Because just north of this little hidey hole, there's the mighty Bay of LA, which many consider to be the finest cruising grounds in all of Mexico. So Puerto Don Juan makes for a perfect stop to pause and take a break for pushing north for some hardcore exploration. Well, we made it to Puerto Don Juan. Actually, we got here last night. We had actually thought we'd sit at the last anchor for a couple of days riding out what was supposed to be some gale force winds. But while we were hiking around, those winds sort of petered out. So we made a run for it because Ken and Sebastian, they were up here. We we're trying to catch up with them because their season here in Mexico is running out quickly. So, hoping to spend a couple more days with them before they're gone, and we finally caught them. That's because we got a racing stripe. So, we're gonna check this place out right over here, right up over that ridge. I think we can climb over and check out one of these other bays. So, going for a hike. So, we rounded up my old friend Ken, and we headed out into the desert. One of our favorite things about the Northern Sea of Cortez is not what it has, but what it doesn't have. There's nobody around. So, for those who like to roam and wander, point yourself in any direction and head on out. And if you ever happen to go hiking with Brenda, don't fall for the old put your head in this dark cave and see if anything's living in there trick. Cause she'll get you every time. You better, can you see what's in there? Hello! <gasps> <laughs> yep, that never gets old. From Puerto Don Juan, it's a few miles of a meandering stroll up and over some ridge lines, around some canyons, and through some pretty interesting scenery to the next bay south. And once we got there, well, you guessed it, we had it all to ourselves. After a nice refreshing swim and a quick bit of lunch, back into the desert we went. But on that nice meandering stroll back to our little floating home, there were a couple of canyons that jumped out and got right in our way. We're lost, we're lost in the desert. One way down and it's fast. But not to worry, after a bit of zigzagging and a few wrong turns, we finally made it back to our little floating home. We made it! We made it! It's a miracle! Nice job. Ooh, that was close. I ran out of water. You almost did die, right? I almost died. With old shipwrecks to explore, pretty good fishing and snorkeling, and zero concerns about weather within the walls of this bay, 
Puerto Don Juan would end up being our home sweet home for a few days. And I gotta say, it was a pretty great few days. Puerto Don Juan was so great that even good old Ace loved it here. But as everybody knows, all good things must eventually come to an end. And with the Bay of LA right around the corner from this little hidey hole, after a few days, we were ready to move on and get back to exploring. Puerto Don Juan, it was only a quick few miles of an easy light wind sail to this place. Well, we made it to the Bay of LA, this is Bahia de Los Angeles. And this place was pretty high on my list of must-sees here in Mexico, so I'm kind of glad we got here. But uh, I think I'll talk more about that later on because for now we're going into town to pick up supplies here this is the bay of la village which is a tiny little dusty little spot but they got a couple of restaurants they got a couple of grocery stores but it's still pretty remote and rugged uh, there is no cell phone service up here we haven't seen cell phone service on the baja for well a long time there's a couple pockets here and there but generally there's nothing remote and rugged this place is no different, but a couple of these restaurants, they do have satellite internet, so we can sit down and have a, a meal and some Wi-Fi. That's really slow, but at least we can check in with family and friends. But we're just going to stock up and get out of here. There's too much to explore to be sitting around right here. Off to the grocery store. See you later. The Bay of LA Village is a remote, dusty little town way out in the middle of nowhere. And even though this place had some restaurants and some supplies we were desperately craving, just within a stone's throw away from this dusty little town was the Bay of LA. And in the Bay of LA, there's tons of anchorages and islands that were calling our name. So, after a quick supply run, we were out of there. Well, we made it to Isla Ventana. Got here yesterday afternoon, actually, and had a pretty good night. But, unfortunately, I think our time with Ken and Sebastian, it's come to an end when we pulled in here. Ken kept pushing farther north. They're both just running out of time here in Mexico. They've got to get farther north, cover some miles, haul their boats out, and get back to the States. So, I think it's the end of an era. Ken and Sebastian, if you're watching this, it was great! I think I'll talk more about that later. Actually, I've got a whole lot of stuff to talk about later. I want to talk about this region as a whole. 
But uh, for now, we're here at this place. So we're gonna go hike up to the top of the island because that's what you do here. Go do some fishing because right now it's yellowtail season. And we hear from the fishermen that yellowtail's been just great. So gonna take the dinghy out. We're gonna do stuff that normal cruisers do. So we'll talk later. See ya. Look at this place. From down below, I thought the trail just came right up here and that was that. There's a big old crater up here. This is kind of amazing. Hiking trails to your heart's content. Pretty cool. This looks like a petrified tree. It looks like a bark and a rings and everything. With all sorts of interesting geology, tons of plants that wanted to reach out and get you, and even some towering flowers the likes of which we've never seen before. Add all that to a whole bunch of room to roam and some pretty amazing views. It's no wonder that Isla Ventana quickly became added to our list of favorite stops. Well, this place is kind of incredible. Look at that view back there. That's our racing boat. Out of this world. Come up to the top. I thought this was just gonna be a little speck of an island. It's huge. Pretty amazing. Lots of cool stuff to see. Come see it. One of the best things about having no place to be anymore is that sometimes we're exactly where we're supposed to be. And this little island, way up in the northern Sea of Cortez, smack dab in the middle of the Bay of LA, it would hold us captive for a few days. But as great as Isla Ventana was, all around us, there were tons of other islands and anchorages to explore. So after a few days of being in exactly the right place, it was time for us to get out of there. But that's a story for next time. So join us in our next episode as we experience our first and hopefully last Elefante.